Hi, this is Keith Bryant, and we have uh, day two of the Keith Bryant Show at Apex 2019. And I'm joined by two of my good friends from Mirtek, uh, Brian D'Amico, who is president of North America, and David Bennett, who's president of Europe. And I know we've just seen a press release that you guys are having another record year on top of a record year. So perhaps you could give us a bit of the, the, the detail between the headline, everything is great number. <laughs> Everything is great. Just read the headline. <laughs> now, we actually had the most successful year we had in our corporate history, which is a big achievement here at Murta Corp, North America. We did extremely well uh, beyond all expectations. Now, we did have a lot of new technology that we offer that I believe is driving the sales forward, and that's with um, the automatic programming software that we introduced. It's driving sales. But quite frankly, it has been the best year. We've had growth ever since, I think it was 2009 when we took that big dip. Right? Beyond that, we've had growth steady every single year. So we've had eight consecutive years of growth, with last year being our best year. January of this year so far, we've already booked $2 million worth of orders, which I've never done, ever. So in a nutshell, that's it. So that's good. Are you seeing the same in Europe, David? Yes, we've uh, had a similar thing, Keith. We've, uh, we've had very similar to Brian. We started in 2008, uh, eight and nine, small numbers, making some money, but small numbers. And then it just exponentially grew. Uh, last year was our best year by far um, and the year before was pretty good as well so uh, it, it was a real bumper. The, what, the result of uh, 2018 was, uh, was a, a credit to my team and also to my dis distributors and of course a big thanks to the customer. Okay this is going to be difficult because this is a two-part question okay. <laughs> the, the first part is the market growing or is it your market share and second part is are, are you seeing the change from 2d to 3d being the the biggest contributor to the success right as far as as far as the European market and when I say Europe we look after India South Africa Middle East so it's yeah. pretty encompassing area it's virtually it's virtually all 3d I mean probably I'm gonna say in the high high 80s at least so yes it's technologically driven that it's very demanding. I think the European market is probably recognized as the most technical market in the world. It doesn't have the volume of some other areas, but the work that's being done there is always right on the edge. So they want whatever's the best. You know, they don't care about uh, price as much. I mean, everybody cares about price, of course, but what, what I get asked more than anything else is to come and look at the issue, look at the problems. What have you got that can help me here? And it's very demanding, so it really suits the Miratech product. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what we're seeing generally is happening in Europe. It's all about increasing yields, reducing costs, and doing everything they can. So I guess you're seeing a lot of um, 2D equipment being replaced by 3D, and then you're seeing a lot of people putting SPI in to get uh, increased yields as well. Yes, very much. Um, I, th I, I certainly wouldn't think it's the end of 2D because when Industry 4.0 starts to be deployed, properly you can't have a gap in the middle of your line so there will be there will have to be a technology after the placement systems now I know you can use 3d there but I believe the vast majority when they realize that you can't have a dumb area in a production line will invest in 2d yeah so I mean, 2d in that position makes more sense because you just want to see if the components there if it's in the right place and it's the right component and it's the right orientation and you guys can do that dead easily with 2D. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So I think I think it's going to have a resurgence, yeah. but for a very specialized usage. Yeah. And are you seeing the same thing, Brian? Is it driven by technology, or is it driven by people getting into AOI for the first time, or basically, you know, what what are you seeing that's your biggest contributor to the the, the sales success? All right. See, I'm, I'm seeing the growth where my customers are basically growing and adding more lines of equipment, which is great. So I think that the industry overall is growing. And I'm hearing from quite a few people who are doing well, doing much better than they had done in the past. Other vendors, other vendors of SMT inspection equipment and also pick and place, screen printers, etc. So I believe the industry is growing. I also know that, of course, people are investing in that new technology in 3D. Uh, one of the things I think is going to happen is kind of go along with what Dave is saying. People who have invested in 2D technology already, if they're really looking ahead to Industry 4.0, the goal there would be to take the 2D systems that they have from the past, now put those in the middle of the line, put them post-placement, and then invest in that 3D system for post-reflow. 
And I am seeing that a lot of people are investing in the new technology. What that does is it frees up a lot of 2D systems. There seems to be more 2D systems on the market, but they're used machines. The smart customers, I believe, are taking those 2D systems and using them for post-placement and investing in that whole industry 4.0 in the future. Because you need the information. Of course, wherever you find the defect, if you can find a defect post-print, right? Of course, with your SPI, you clean off the board. It's really easy, right? If you find it post-placement, you take out your tweezers, you either put a component down that may be missing or change the rotation, the cost of fixing the problem is much more inexpensive the quicker yeah. you find it. So it makes sense to have that 2D system post-placement. Yeah, and, and the biggest one that, that we're seeing when people are doing that, the thing that they catch is somebody who's loaded either the wrong reel yeah. or they've loaded the wrong value of a resistor or whatever, um, or um, you know, the pick and place machine has just got a block nozzle or something and it's just mm -hmm. dumping the components on the board and instead of putting them where it's supposed to put them. And you know, th those things, they don't sound much, but once you've got past reflow, yep. you, know, you, you find them in in-circuit tests to begin with, and that's you know, $150, $200 a, a, a pop to begin with. Exactly. And you know, exactly. it, it, it really is a saving. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you, look at, um, if you look at all of the different, I'll call it offerings coming from everybody, you know, we've got about six standards in this industry so far being acclaimed. I don't know how you can have six standards or something, but you know, that's how it seems to be. Eventually there will be a system uh, standard, a, a usage that will be acceptable to the customers and we will see somebody really go big time, maybe across a multinational starting to deploy their lines with this high tech uh, feedback, uh, okay we'll call it industry 4.0 as possible and I think when that happens their, com their competitors, the other EMS's or whoever it is, have very quickly got to deploy, very quickly. And uh, you know, for me, I've always said the same thing. It's got to be badge blind because there's going to be legacy equipment. There's going to be new equipment. I don't think you can go in and tell people what they're going to have. Yeah. I think it's a case of we can connect to anything. You can, you know, even other competitors. Maybe. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I I had uh, David Bergman from IPC sitting here yesterday, and the the thing that excited me was he said, you know, okay, we we've got all the connectivity. We've got CS, CFX running now. Our next goal for this year is connecting legacy equipment yeah and that as you say that's really going to be the big thing that's going to make 4.0 take off yeah, yeah. i mean yeah you know, we, we we know that it works as a technology um we've looked at lines that have let's say a, a 95 percent first time pass rate at in circuit test um by putting in some better metrics and some better controls um we can save four and a half percent so they're their first pass yield goes up to 99.5. And if you put that into uh, monetary terms for a single production line, it, it pays for 4.0, it pays for whatever you need to connect the machines, and it starts making a profit after a couple of weeks. And you know, it, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna give, as you say, the contract manufacturers a huge competitive edge because you know, it, it, it's all about yield, it's all about profit, and it's all about, you know, running everything as tight as you can and yeah it's it's definitely going to make a big difference and you guys are there at the forefront and your Intellisys platform is already doing this stuff for inspection already so you know it's good to see um one one last question before we talk a bit more about technology um and it's personal interest question um you, you're doing I'm sorry we don't take those questions oh, okay i was going to say you're doing incredibly well we know this um your, your figures prove it um, how does that translate globally to numbers of machines that you've got out there running? Well, we've actually just sold our 17,000th system. So 17,000 machines out there that Mertech. We've been in business since 1999. It's quite a few machines. So um, we're going to break up some champagne a little bit later, and you're invited. <laughs> okay, I'll just have a small glass because I know that's all I'm going to get offered anyway. <laughs> okay, technology. Obviously, things are getting smaller. Things need to be done faster. 3D AOI is a very competitive environment. How are you guys holding together the technology advantage to make sure that you keep the sales increase going? 
That's always a good question. Of course, there's always good competitors out there, and if there weren't, then our machines wouldn't get better, right? And their machines wouldn't get better either. It's always a matter of leapfrogging one another, right? The key with Murtech is we've we've always had the most advanced technology out there. We really do concentrate heavily on technology. So, with of course our camera system, our 15 megapixel camera, there's still nobody out there that has a 15 megapixel camera system. It's important to have that heart of that system being the best that it can be, right? The 15 meg camera allows us to achieve speed. It allows us to achieve accuracy. That's the core of the system. Beyond that, we have projection technology for 3D. So. The technology that we're using there is Blue DLP Moire. Mm -hmm. Blue DLP Moire can deal with reflective devices. And also what we're doing is we're able to now look at, using three different frequencies, we're able to look at devices from zero to 25 millimeters tall. All of these advances that we've made with our systems are what we've done to try to achieve, once again, that leapfrog over our competitors. Okay, so I, I understand the the issues that Moray always has with the reflective components, which, I mean, you know, that, that was the, the, the big issue from the early days of the, you know, the fixed grid Moray, like the comb. Um, so it's, it's good that you've got around that one. Um, and, yeah, I, I understand the more megapixels you have, the, the bigger the image, but normally the longer that takes to process. But how does that affect the field of view? Because, you know, field of view is the speed thing. You know, if, if, if you could zap a whole board in one, in one image and then do all your processing, you're going to be a, a hell of a lot faster. And if you've got a lot of megapixels but only a small field of view, you're still going to have a huge amount of processing because you've got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of images. And you're going to have tremendous image quality, but you've got a lot of processing and a, a lot of time. Yeah, it really depends upon the features that you're looking for. For normal SMT production, you're talking, you know, and it's all gated by the, uh, by the telecentric lens that we use. It's gated by the the resolution, right? So if we have a 10 micron system versus a 15 micron system, of course the 15 micron system is going to have a larger FOV. So there you're going to, that translates to speed, right? If you have a 10 micron system, you're kind of gating down or, or decreasing that FOV, but you have more accuracy. If you start getting the semi, semiconductor stuff, you're talking about, you know, sub, sub micron level. Of course, you're dealing with very, very small FOVs. So it really depends on the customer's application. But of course, if you do decrease the FOV, it's going to end up taking a longer time because you have multiple, you're still dealing with 15 megapixels of information, but it takes more frames in order to process the board. And, and are you seeing that being an advantage in Europe as well, Dave? Yeah, as, as I mentioned earlier, Keith, um, whatever Miratech does, it tends to drop in the uh, European market first. Um, ev every bit of press, every technology leap we do forward, there's always uh, a European customer somewhere, whether it be the UK, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, who are doing something that's quite complex and see the advantage. Because, you know, we don't just make this stuff up for fun. We do it because we, we know those issues need to be solved. So the guys at Miratech are, 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 you know, they knew there was a reflective issue with Moray, so we create the blue Moray. You know, we knew that the camera industry wasn't overexcited about trying to give us what we need as an AOI manufacturer when they can sell tens of thousands of cameras to a factory looking at it beans, you know. So it, it's, it's crazy that, that as an inspection company, an optical inspection company, that we did not have control. So many years ago we made the decision, we will develop, we will manufacture what is needed to go forward. And from that now it's become sensors, lighting, everything. With Amir Tech, Nobody except Mirtech controls where we go, when we go, how we go. Every other company, almost, almost, I've got to say, all of them are in the hands of their suppliers. And they can stop the camera, they can, they can do whatever. And I don't care how big the AOI company is, compared to 100 food factories around the world or medical factories, the volume of camera that we would be buying is negligible to them. Yeah, and you, you have exactly the same issue that we've always had with uh, electronics x-ray. You're, you're a very small customer and you have to rely on, I mean, in, in our case, traditionally, it was the medical industry um, because, you know, they're selling millions of x-ray machines, so they're making loads and loads of parts, and we're buying, you know, in the thousands. So, yeah, it's, it's good to know that other people are suffering the same pain, but you guys have found a, found a, a very novel way around it. But, of course, that, you know, that... that the, the control gives you a cost. 
yes. but it's it's obviously been worth it to give yourselves that sort of unique place at the front of the market it was you know it was a brave move um, when we when we went into this it wasn't a five minute fix it took years to to actually have a, a camera system that we can proudly stand up now and say there is nothing in the world that competes with a 15 mega co-express high-speed camera and we've gone beyond that we've got 25 megapixels we've got 18 megapixels we've got all if all different types of cameras and lenses depending on what is required whether it's LED manufacturing whether it's semicolon whether it's SNT we totally control as I say what we do when we do where we do and and I think that is by far our biggest strength our customers never have to worry that when some technology comes in the future that their supplier is going to be looking on the shelf of some camera company who's designed a camera to do something, a little bit of something for a lot of people. If they look at a mirror tech, they'll be looking at a camera that's designed specifically to deal with that problem. Because we, you know, it's our industry. We know what's coming. We're already looking for the future. Yeah. So yeah, mar market trends and customer feedback are always the best way to drive your R&D department. Yeah, most definitely. Well, gentlemen, thank you both very much for thank sharing you, your time, and uh, I'll be round for the glass of champagne this afternoon. 